What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're going to rescue the unmade for Warhammer Warcry. This warband in particular has always had my attention. The sculpts are not what you typically see from Games Workshop, and it feels like they're actually having some fun pushing that chaotic aspect of Warcry. I'm definitely into it. I picked up this box not too long ago for 16 bucks. It was advertised as being possibly incomplete and only slightly converted, which in itself is an interesting way to put it, but for me, serious opportunity to have a new warband at a quarter of the actual price. Let's take a look at what's inside the box and see what we can do from there. All of the models are in the box, which is a great start. Some of them have been put together and have a little bit of paint on them. There are a bunch of bits at the bottom of the box as well. I'm hoping that everything is here, but if not, we're just gonna roll with it and see what happens. Let's get the rest of this sorted and put together. Honestly, there isn't really anything wrong with this box. One model looks like it was beginning to take shape as a Necromunda conversion, which is a cool idea, but not completed. That model is also missing its weapon, but instead of swapping it out, I left the gun hand attached and put an extra blade on it. Necromunda still might be a good place for these guys to end up, but that's probably for another day. Time to base and prime these models before getting stuck right into painting. Alright, let's start off with some inks. I want these to be easy enough to accomplish and still look pretty cool. Green ink shot at a perpendicular angle to the model will give us some cool colors to work off of. Purple ink from below to bring in some shading also playing nicely off the green. And finally, a spray of white ink from the top to give us a cold dead skin look. I'm going to mix up some homebrew contrast paint for the leather. This is something you can do with pretty much any inks and medium. In this case, I'm taking a few drops of burnt umber ink, adding in a drop of orange and black, mixing that in with some Liquitex matte medium, and you have yourself a custom contrast paint. 
very useful if you're working fast and don't want to spend $7 per bottle of contrast. For the metallics, I want something really bright that I can work off of. I'm going to cover up all of the metals with Vallejo Aluminum, really bright with great coverage over pretty much any color. This also gives us a nice clean place to start for later weathering. Using some Kislev flesh, I'm going to quickly take care of the leather by dry brushing it. This will pick up the details and leave all of the recesses dark. Using the custom contrast mix really gave the leather a lot of character. So this will preserve that and give us those highlights. It's also really quick and easy to do. Nuln oil on the metallics to darken them down and grease them up. This will be the first step for the metals. I'm also going to wash the leather. The wash will blend our dry brushing into the leather a bit more, making it look more natural. And it should get rid of any shine left over from the ink. For the skin, I'm going to be using purple oil wash. I want the skin to be mostly preserved the way it is. So once the wash is dry, we can come back in with a Q-tip and clean up any of the wash to really brighten up the skin. To really make these models stand out, I'm going to be using Flesh Tears Red Contrast Paint on some of the metallics. Normally, I already like this color, for a lot of reasons, but especially over a bright metallic undercoat, it comes across like really bright red metal, and it looks fantastic on these helmets. There are a few times when I'm painting that I feel the need to use my fingers. Sometimes it's a quick way to wipe off excess paint, but other times I do it to create extra texture or to create an effect in one way or another. I wanted this guy to have that bright red upper half to match, but he's also got this skull on the top of his head. So using my finger, I just wipe away some of the excess to bring back that base color. You don't want to push too hard as to not damage the paint underneath, but just enough to reveal that color. It looks really cool. My point is, don't be afraid to finger paint when you need to. 
In order to make these guys a little bit dirtier and bring in some contrast on the metallics, I'm going to cover them in some brown enamel wash. Once that's dry, I'll bring in some rust tones that will accent the purple skin very nicely. Again, don't be afraid to finger paint. It's extremely useful for mixing things up. For the bases, I went pretty simple. A mix of some contrast paint for color, and after it dries, a layer of white enamel wash to make them kind of washed out and dusty. I had a lot of fun with these guys. I got pretty lucky in that pretty much all of the pieces were still in the box, and even though the seller was unsure, for 16 bucks, it looked like a great deal as is. And if all the pieces weren't in there, there was a good reason to try and make something of them anyways. Using a few fun techniques and only minimal effort to finish building this box, we were able to come out of it with a full warband. And I love when eBay plans come together. Check out this insane warband, the Unmade. Thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And if you're interested in supporting this channel further, I've got a Patreon with some really cool rewards. The link is in the description below. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.